I'm not sure whether it was the images from David Attenborough's Blue Planet 2 and the BBC documentary War on Plastics recently, or maybe the frightening statistics I see in our research, or just a midlife crisis, but I found myself wanting to make some changes this year and to do my bit to cut down on the waste that I generate. From recycling more to buying second-hand clothes, putting my own unwanted garments in the school filler bag fundraiser and walking instead of driving short journeys, I've done more this year already than in the other 44 that I've been on this earth. I'm not going to solve the planet's problems, but as the Chinese proverb goes, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step, but more has to be done. Here are some of those frightening statistics. Demand and therefore production of plastic has grown 2000% in the past 50 years, but surprisingly little has been recycled. Of the some 9 billion tonnes of plastic produced since it was invented, it's estimated around 7 billion tonnes are still in existence. 15% is recycled, 40% goes to landfill, 32% leaks into our environment and the remainder is incinerated. It's also estimated that at least 8 million tonnes of plastic enter our oceans each year. That's the equivalent of a large rubbish truck full of plastic being dumped into the sea every minute of every day. By 2050, plastics could outnumber fish. If we're forced to do something, change can be quick. Take the 5p plastic bag levy introduced in the UK in 2015 for example. It's already reduced single-use plastic bags by 90% down from 140 to 10 bags per person on average each year. Given that 1 million plastic bottles are bought every minute globally, it's perhaps no surprise that single-use bottles and cups are now high on the agenda of those wanting to limit their production. In an effort to do more, a friend and I attempted Plastic Free July this year. We discovered it was hard to be good. Plastic is simply everywhere, especially when it comes to the weekly shop. Our texts are littered, pardon the pun, with successes and failures including trips to our local farmer's market, despite the extra petrol, and some misadventures at the supermarket. But we did manage to cut down on our bathroom plastic. Only to be faced with our weekly shop yet again. Or the heat wave at the end of the month. but we did at least manage to finish on a good note. But Plastic Free July is evidence at least that individuals want to do more to kick our addiction to plastic. Another good sign is that a recent UK government consultation paper on reducing plastic waste using the tax system received more than 162,000 responses, the highest number in the Treasury's history. So what are governments and companies doing about the problem? Well, the UK government has imposed a charge on plastic bags. Other countries have done the same. And at the end of April 2018, more than 40 major businesses made a pact to eliminate problematic or unnecessary single-use plastic packaging by 2025. These companies, which between them are responsible for 80% of plastic packaging sold through UK supermarkets, include household names such as Unilever, Nestle, Procter & Gamble and Coca-Cola. Grocers Aldi, Asda, Lidl, Tesco, Sainsbury's, Morrisons and Waitrose also agreed to it. Germany has the highest recycling rate of municipal solid waste at 80%, already well ahead of the EU target of 50% by 2020. And India, for example, has gone a step further and pledged to ban single-use plastics by 2022. But why are some industries being targeted more than others? Edentree has a great chart showing exactly why. As you can see, the global building and construction industry produced 72 million tonnes of plastic in 2015 but the average time that plastic is used is 35 years. 
Compare this to 65 million tonnes of textiles that have an average use of just five years, 46 million tonnes of consumer products that only last three years, and, wait for it, 161 million tonnes of packaging that's used for less than six months. You can see why packaging is a top priority. So I decided to ask some fund managers how they're addressing the problem, the fund managers that specialise in responsible, ethical or environmental investing. Aberdeen Standard Investments conducts an annual survey of investors to ask them what ethical means to them and what issues are front of mind when it comes to responsible investing. The most recent survey revealed that investors are indeed concerned about plastics, so ASI has started to factor in these considerations when making investment decisions. However, the problem is, says ASI, that traditional plastic is unfortunately more efficient than many of its bioplastic counterparts. It's light, low cost and great at protecting food and products. Biodegradable and compostable plastics are more sustainable, but they're also more expensive. The bottom line is that customers are often unwilling to pay more. I know this is true because, for example, I investigated buying milk in a glass bottle from a milkman, but it would have cost me £12 a week instead of £4 a week. But ASI remains positive. ASI gave an example of its engagement with Starbucks. The group launched its Greener Cup initiative and promotes, with customer discounts, the use of reusable cups. This is good, but in terms of scaling back on plastics, it's missed target set in 2015. Starbucks had aimed to reduce plastic by 25%, but managed 1.4% by the end of 2017. ASI says this was disappointing, but Starbucks has since reset this at a lower target, which at least shows they're still committed to some reduction. ASI is currently engaging with them about eradicating non-essential items like plastic stirrers. Edentree is part of the Plastic Solutions Investors Alliance. They told us, We believe retailers have an extended responsibility to the packaging that they put out on the market, which is why at the beginning of this year we engaged with our holdings Tesco, Sainsbury's, M&S and Morrison's to understand what they're doing to address the plastic packaging challenge. It's encouraging that all four of these UK supermarkets have signed up to the UK Plastic Pact, and have set ambitious targets to ensure packaging is fully recyclable or compostable by 2025, and also increase the use of recycled materials in their packaging. We believe, however, that more progress is needed to meet the targets which will require collaboration within the sector, as well as working in partnership with other stakeholders, including the waste management sector and customers. Stuart Investors recently decided to take a more strategic approach to engagement with companies, and identified three priorities across all portfolios one of which was pollution and a focus on plastics and packaging. At the end of 2018, the fund manager launched two new collaborative initiatives, one of which is focused on tackling plastic pellet loss throughout supply chains. Plastic pellets, flakes and powders, referred to collectively as pellets, are the raw materials and building blocks of the plastic industry. They're also the second largest direct source of marine microplastic pollution, with over 200,000 tonnes entering the ocean each year. We chose this topic for two reasons. First, it is a problem with a simple, albeit not easy, solution, namely eradicate spillages. Second, our belief is that large, daunting challenges such as climate change, plastic waste and poverty alleviation are best addressed by tackling small, discrete, manageable parts of the broader problem. As such, this specific initiative complements the broader work going on more generally on plastic pollution. At Rathbone's Green Bank Investments, it's not simply a case of screening out companies with any kind of exposure to plastic but rather looking for companies where they can identify and challenge unnecessary or excessive packaging. Single-use plastics, like straws, disposable coffee cups and plastic cutlery, are all common and sources of waste. Looking to encourage companies to eliminate the unnecessary use of plastic is an important part of reducing single-use plastics. Deliveroo, for example, now asks you to select if you need cutlery included in your delivery, saying, help us reduce plastic waste, only request cutlery when you need it. And Kames gave us an example of a company that is actually very responsible in many ways, but has been slow to move on packaging, Hotel Chocolat. Its cocoa plantations are ethical, help with crop rotation and treat employees well. But it's only just started to reduce plastic packaging. Sue Round, who heads up the elite-rated Eden Tree Amity UK Fund, believes the importance of plastic pollution is often underestimated from a general investment perspective, especially as it affects the world's stocks of natural assets, so therefore bears a significant cost to the economy. For instance, she pointed out that plastic pollution is estimated to cost the world at least $13 billion per year, a bill which is picked up by the industries benefiting from the ocean's ecosystem, such as tourism or fisheries. It also makes sense from a business perspective to find innovative solutions and reduce resource costs. 
This means more mainstream funds are also investing in companies that are doing just that. In a recent podcast, Mark Sherlock, manager of elite-rated Hermes US Mid-Equity, told us about how a company he owns is starting to tackle the problem of plastic. Um, an interesting stat I was reading the other day is that uh, for, for you know, water bottles, um, disposable water bottles, 7 billion water bottles are opened every day. Only 1 billion of them are recycled. Um, if you think on a typical Coke can, the, 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 the closure remains with the can. That is 99% of the time not the case with water bottles. And the most polluting um, uh, piece of litter found on a beach uh, uh, globally is uh, those these these plastic water bottle caps. So it's a, it's a significant issue, and I think we're all aware of plastics in the ocean and, and, and so on. Uh, Aptar, as an example of their innovation, have uh, um, come up with what they call a stay with cap, which is, as the name suggests, the cap stays with the bottle. Um, they're looking into minimum standards of recycled plastic, um, you know, for inclusion in their bottles and so on. As for me, I fully intend to carry on trying to reduce my plastic use. Having signed a Greenpeace petition on the subject, I'm also now making a monthly donation to the cause, which I figure will offset any guilt on bad plastic use days. The good news is that while we're just at the start of our long journey tackling the plastics problem, it presents opportunity and necessity to innovate. As ASI concluded, it's a rare and exciting circumstance to have such momentum to address an environmental problem that also provides clear opportunities for industry. For more information on responsible investing, visit fundcalibre.com.